Mina, Cone Bonwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. More filling with the spirit. Um, I'll stay on this topic as long as I feel like it. It's my channel. I can do as I please, quite frankly. Um, no timer today. I think I'm going to keep this pretty short and pretty sweet. Watch that not be true. Hopefully it will be. I'm going to read it again. Bible memorization is very important. And this verse is the highlight of this little series that I'm doing. Ephesians 5.18, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. You hear the word filled with the Spirit a lot, especially in charismatic and non-denominational circles, which I am in. Proud of it. And sometimes you kind of, it becomes a catchphrase, and you don't know exactly what it means. And it, because it's so popular, either the meaning gets twisted, or it's not exactly what the Bible was saying, or it just loses some of the power that it should have. And the Bible is the very Word of God. Our Creator, which spoke everything into existence, spoke these words. This should be incredibly important to us. So, with that in mind, be filled with the Spirit is not just a catchphrase that is come and go. It's, it's important. It's mentioned many times in the New Testament. It's something this verse commands us to do, as I've said in the last few messages, on a continuous basis. This should be a daily thing. Not that it should become rote or normal or commonplace, except for it should be commonplace and normal. And since it's the Word of God, we should never, ever, ever take it for granted. It is that important to be filled with His Spirit. Um, even though it is so commonly used in some churches and so commonly hated in other churches because, I'll be honest, a lot of my group, the Charismatics, they're a little on the crazy side. Some of the things they do, some of their behaviors, it's a bit eccentric, it's a bit out there. And some of them, as pretty much with every group I've ever seen of humankind, has its crooks, has its thieves, have people you really don't want associated with with your group. Unless you're proud to be thieves and crooks and being a thug is just a wonderful thing for you, which it shouldn't be. But be filled with the Spirit. Don't let it become a commonplace thing, even though it should be common. Don't let it become just the norm, even though it should be normal. Don't let it become just a catchphrase, even though it's something we should be doing every single day. The Word of God should be fresh every time you read it, and every time you're filled with the Spirit, it is fresh, it is real, it is alive. Uh, I wish I could somehow transcend words and like show y'all what that meant. I know what it means to be filled with the Spirit. It happened last week at camp. It happened several times before the camp, even in the middle of, uh, of my little uh, hip hypocritical phase. The Lord didn't abandon me or leave me on my own. I was still filled with the Spirit on a number of occasions. Um, he used me despite myself. He loved me despite myself. And that is a promise that can go to people who aren't necessarily completely sold out yet, but anyone who claims the name of the Lord, who has the Holy Spirit living inside them, can be and should be filled with the Spirit. If you are, if you're not charismatic, remember it's not just a bunch of crazy people on the side who use this phrase, you should be filled with the Spirit. The Bible tells you you should be, so it's not a bad thing. Some people have just gotten it wrong. And to those of you who are charismatic, you hear it all the time, probably every Sunday, probably several people ask you if you're filled with the Spirit, they tell you that they're filled with the Spirit, and they everyone talks about how being filled with the Spirit is a wonderful thing. Yes, it is. Keep in mind what that means biblically. It's not just a feeling. It's not just emotion. It is the Spirit of God Himself in you, moving you to do something great and wonderful for the kingdom. It's not just a feeling or an emotion, which, whew, man, that worship was so great. Man, I felt the Spirit. If you're feeling God's presence, just keep in mind how much He loves you, how precious that is. Jesus was beaten brutally and died on a cross so you could experience that, God's love. Don't take this wonderful thing that should be common and normal, don't take it for granted. And don't think it, you have some right to it and just, oh, this is the way it should be. It's precious. He is precious. He is important. And we exist for Him, not the other way around. He's not our genie doing what we want Him to do. We are His servants. And that's not what I was thinking I was going to preach on at all, but that's what I felt 
the Lord wanted me to say. That's where the Spirit led me. So thank you guys very much for watching this. I love you, and God bless.